A reading from the Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus summoned his twelve disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits, to cast them out, to cure every disease and every sickness. These are the names of the twelve apostles. First, Simon, also known as Peter, and his brother Andrew, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, Philip, Bartholomew, Thomas, and Matthew, the tax collector, James, the son of Alphaeus, and Thaddeus, Simon the Cananean, and Judas Iscariot, the one who betrayed him. These twelve Jesus sent out with the following instructions. Go nowhere among the Gentiles, and enter no town of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And as you go, proclaim the good news, the kingdom of heaven has come near. The word of the Lord. The part of this story that's uh, jumping out at me today that I wanted to, to, to bring up was this fascinating part of Jesus gathering these 12 apostles and sending them out into the world, but very clearly saying, don't go to the Gentiles, don't go to the Samaritans. I want you to focus on going out to only the Jewish people right at this moment. Um, so let's just think for a second about why that might be. Uh, we know it's not because Jesus didn't want the, the word, the, the good news to ever get to the Gentiles or the Samaritans because later on in the story, Jesus absolutely wants the good news to go to all people, including the Gentiles and the Samaritans. So there must be some reason why when Jesus is first sending out the apostles, he sends them out first to the Jewish populations. Now, it could be because he thought the Gentiles and the Samaritans weren't ready yet. Maybe let's focus on the people, the Jewish people who are waiting for a Messiah. They're, they're primed and they're ready to hear this in a way that, that the Gentiles and the Samaritans, it's just going to take them a little bit longer before they're ready. That would be in keeping with the idea of God approaching us where we are, God always approaching us at our own current level of, of what we're ready to learn and how we're ready to go. And then as we learn and grow, then God approaches us at a deeper, more complex level. Uh, examples including moving from the complexity of an eye for an eye is justice. And then once we get a little bit more developed, we can move past that from actually taking out someone's eye for taking out your eye is not in fact justice. That's retribution and it's wrong. So this would be in keeping with that. The other thing it makes me wonder is, I wonder if it's not just that, that Jesus was concerned about the audience being ready, but about his apostles being ready. Sending them out first to the people for whom um, they would be able to hear and receive the word in a gentler, easier sense to then prepare them that as they got experience, as they got better, they would be able to move on to more complex problems like, like pitching the idea of the Messiah to a Gentile audience that wasn't waiting for a Messiah. So it might not just be for the crowds, it might be for the sake of the apostles. I think in my own case about when I was first being trained to be a teacher and before I was immediately dropped into a really difficult school setting, uh, I, I was put in a student teaching role. And student teaching at particular schools where, where we were told this will be an easier setting for you to get your start and to start learning how to be a teacher, to be learning how to be a good teacher. And then, then as you get more experience and as you get better at this, we'll move you into harder more complex settings where where the work is really important but we can't just throw you right into the deep end of the pool as they as they say so i think about that a lot i think about that as is maybe that makes sense of why jesus would send the first apostles out into a setting that would be easier so that they could grow and learn and experience and then as they grew and as they learned, they could then do that important work in a more complex setting, a more difficult setting. 
And maybe that says something for the way Jesus approaches ministry for us. Maybe we start out by approaching people within our own church, within our denomination that we know think more like us, look more like us, sound more like us. It's a little bit easier to practice ministry and theological discussions when when it's a, a less complex of a setting. But that we're not supposed to stop there. I think that's important to remember too. That as we learn and as we grow, we are then ready to go out to where the challenges are a little more complex, but to do so having been better prepared. In that way, it's a uh, constant, it's a constant process of learning, growing, doing ministry in more complex ways that then help us to learn and grow even more and do ministry in even more complex ways and continue to learn and grow. All right. Like that sounds like a, a great way for Jesus to form us for ministry. Amen.